All right, so here I went all the way to the Philippines to get myself a Kasama fountain pen. It is the first, and if I'm not mistaken, the only fountain pen made in the Philippines by Filipinos. So this is their Una um, model and um, came yesterday. Okay, even if I've already opened the bag just to check if this came in this particular um case it's a very nice filipino weave case um and i love it because it's in the color that i like as well with a bit of brown so um let's uh, go ahead and have a look at it and i'll share some of my first impressions it's not going to be a total review because i don't have everything i need to sort of like set it up but I do want to see it with you. So, comes in this nice case, and you can see the pen inside, loads of bubble wrap. Okay, and nothing else. Okay. All right, so here is the pen. It's wrapped securely with bubble wrap. Oh, very thoughtful too. They left a little tab there from the, for the tapes. So it's easier for you to unroll. And here is the pen. It's quite a large pen. And it's very beautiful. Wow. Okay, this is quite a big pen. Let's move this aside. All right, so this pen is huge. So I thought maybe this would also be a good time for us to sort of get a fountain pen 101, the anatomy of a fountain pen. Um, because that's one thing that I sort of had to learn along the way. I thought I'd just put all that information together for those who are beginning on their fountain pen journey. So this is called a fountain pen. If you're into fountain pens, then you basically know that it is a very good way for you to sort of save up my money. It doesn't look like that at the beginning, I promise you, but eventually it will, I hope. Um, uh, because basically you never throw the pen away. You basically either you repair the parts, you fill the ink reservoir, um, but the pen stays. Okay, so again, a fountain pen, and it comes in three basic parts. Actually, there are quite a number of parts, but basically what you have is the cap and caps can be screwed on which means you have to turn it a bit to open it and some fountain pen caps are just snap caps which you just pull out um there's also a fountain pen that you just click open but uh, i'm not going to go into that so uh the screw on and the snap ones they have a cap that's one of the basic parts they have the nib which is quite important because it sort of determines the size of the lines that you're gonna write with. Okay, that's the nib right there. And the nib is uh, attached to what is called the section. And the section, let's put that aside first. This is the section, okay, right there. So this is the nib and this is the section. And we're gonna put that aside. Let me just get some nice cloth so they don't just roll everywhere. Um. And this particular pen, Kasama's Una, is a cartridge converter, which means it'll come with some sort of device that looks like this. This is called a converter um, the, where you can put ink in. And this tiny bit is sometimes it's long for other pens and sometimes it's short, just like in the Kasama Una. This is called the barrel of the pen. Okay, so again, you have your cap. You have your nib, you have your section, you have the barrel. And the uh, way that you refill it, it could be a uh, converter like this or a cartridge. We'll get to that later. So let's start with the cap. Okay, so when you watch reviews about pens, fountain pens, they'll talk about the different uh, features of the pen. And one of the things that everyone seems to be just a little bit um, obsessed with is what's called the finial. And the finial basically is the top part of the cap and also the bottom part of the barrel. So the finial usually has the brand name or maybe a logo. Um, sometimes it's flat like this 
and sometimes it's domed. Okay, so this is a flat, um, a flat cap, and it has the finial, and in the finial, it has the a logo of Kasama, which is the coconut tree. Very, very Filipino. Um, and then in the cap, right, what you have is the insert. Now, see that kind of opaque shaded part there? Okay. If you see inside, it's like a little smaller portion. That's supposed to help make sure that your nib stays wet. So it sort of traps the air. So that part is called the insert, okay? So a lot of pens have that nowadays, I've noticed. Um, and then you have the center band. This one doesn't have a center band. It's usually like a little um, band right there in the twispy. It looks like this, okay? So that's the band right there. This one, well, maybe you could call this part a band. I don't know. So that's that part. And this opening okay that is called the lip of the pen okay so finial again this is kind of a big deal in fountain pen the finial part then you have the insert which is supposed to keep your nib wet and then you have a band which and this one is quite plain then you have the lip okay so those are the parts of the cap then you have your nib and section okay so the nib can sometimes be pulled uh from the section okay in this case this nib which is a joe nib apparently that's a really good nib again beginner here apologies for those who are super good at this and they're gonna go like oh that is the best nib a lot of people seem to think so one of the best stainless steel nibs okay again you will see that it has some sort of the logo there. So we'll go through the different parts of the nib right now. So for the nib, you have that point right there. Let's see if I can help. Okay, there you go. That point right there at the very end, that part is called the tipping point. Okay, and fountain pens have different, different tipping materials. For this one, it's stainless steel. Some have it in gold. And then you will see that there is some sort of a line there. That is called the slit, okay? And that slit sort of separates part of the pen into two. So there's this, this part. Okay, let's uh, refocus this thing, okay? All right, so it's this part and this part, and these two parts are called tines. And this is where you sometimes need to align it. This is something that nib meisters or nib masters sort of uh, modify to make your pen write the way you want them to write. Okay, so again, you have your tipping point, you have the slit in the middle, you have the slit dividing the this part of the pen into two called tines. Then you have that little hole right there that's called the breather hole. Now in this pen, it's a circle and some pens, it's a heart, okay? Then what you'll have right here, these two, okay, let me help it focus a bit. These two broad parts of it, that's called the shoulder of the nib. Now, this part where you see things written, okay, these things written in this case, there's a little bit of scrawl work happening there. Okay, that's kind of pretty. And it has the coconut tree again, which is the Kasama's logo. That is, uh, those are called imprints. This part too tells you what size of nib you have. So my Kasama is in B or bold. If you see F, that's a fine nib, it's much thinner. EF is extra fine, which is much, much thinner. Then you can also have the M, medium. Then there's a BB, which is like a, I suppose a bolder bold. Okay, so this part where everything is written, um, it's called the imprint, okay, on the nib. 
Okay, and then what you can't really see, oh sorry, this, the rest of it, so this is shoulder, and then the rest of it where most of the imprint is at is called the body of the pen. And inside, I can't seem to take it out, but inside uh, would be the uh, base of your nib, okay? So those are the parts of the nib. Now, you also have on the other side, this is called the feed. This is where your ink will go through. Now, the feed has what's called the fins. Okay, sorry, by the shoulders of the um, nib, the feed has what's called the wings. Then it has the fins. This is the fins, that nice, I don't know, tower looking thing there. Okay, so those are the fins. Then you have the post. That's the post for the uh, this part of the pen. And then you have your ink um, channel, which is somewhere here. I suppose it's this, oh sorry. I suppose it's a little hole there. Sometimes there's just like a slip there. So those are the different parts of your uh, nib, okay? Then you have your section. And this is the section part of the pen. The section part of the pen has basically, um, I think, two parts. Um, and so those two parts basically would be the grip, where you obviously grip the pen, and the threads, which connects it to the barrel. Okay, and finally, you have the barrel. Okay, so the barrel of the pen has the threads here. That's where you kind of assemble things together. Uh, different pens have different types of barrels, uh, but cartridge converter pens like this, which basically means you can use a cartridge or a converter to feed ink in, will have it a bit hollow. Okay, just so. So you have your thread, then you have the body of the pen, it's this part, and then at the very end, you have the other finial. Okay, and in this case, it's a plain finial. I think I like it that way. Um, so again, cap has a finial, and the base has a finial, sorry, the barrel has a finial too. Okay, so those are the basic parts of your fountain pen. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this particular fountain pen, um, the filling material for it is called a cartridge converter. Why is that so? Okay, let's just assemble it. So again, you have your nib, you put it in the section. Um, sometimes, if you're lucky, your pen is a screw type, so you just screw it in to the section. Some pens, you need to pull it. The Kaweco is a pull. Um, that's a little tricky. Now, if you notice right there, you'll see um, the ink feed, okay? Uh, or the ink channel. And in the cartridge converter, you can take the cartridge route wherein you simply plug in the cartridge. Okay, so this is filled with ink already. Okay, so just very straightforward. Uh, or you can use what's called a converter. And the converter basically allows you to have some sort of a piston. That's what you call this sort of mechanism to fill it in much like a cartridge would, but this is not disposable. Although I have to say at this point, some people do reuse the cartridge and apparently it's doable. I haven't tried it yet. I will definitely share with you my experience when I do. So the converter looks like this. It can come in different sizes for different uh, pens. Uh, this is the one that the Kasama Una came with and it also has its different parts. Okay, um, I'm sharing it with you in case you watch videos and you're wondering what is everybody talking about. So for the cartridge, oh sorry, the converter, I always confuse these two. For the converter, you have what's called the mouth. And again, that is where the ink will go through once you fill this part with ink. Okay, so that's the mouth. 
it will go inside. You plug it in the ink channel post thing right there. So you plug it in. Um, so that's a mouth. And then you have the ink reservoir, which is that cavity right there where you fill your pen with ink. Okay, so that's the ink reservoir. And that thing that you see going up and down, that black thing there, that's called the rod. Okay? Um, and then I suppose you'd call that a stopper. So what you do when you fill inks in, you put it in the nib, you dip the nib in, and it sort of sucks the ink into the ink reservoir for your uh, fountain pen. Then you have this part, that's a steel part there, that's called a shroud. Um, shroud means cover, of course, and I suppose that's where they hide um, how this rod works. It's a bit magical, I have to say. Okay, and then this thing that I'm turning, this is called the knob. In this case, it's a black knob. Um, some other brands like Sailor, for example, it has different colors. Um, for the knob, okay? And again, what you do with this, once you uh, want to ink your pen, is you just wanna plug it in, just so. You feel that it's secure, okay? And then you put in your barrel and you screw that in too. Okay, oops, sorry. If you wanna fill it with a pen, I mean with ink, you have to dip this part of the pen, the nib, into the ink uh, bottle and then you basically just suck the ink into your ink reservoir for your converter and once that is done you put in the barrel and you assemble it just like so and then of course you'll want to try your pen Ooh, this kasama una feels very nice then you want to of course cover it with a cap Okay, that's what you call capping it. Now, some pens will have what they call a clip. So, hello, Twisby again. Twisby comes with a clip. This is that part. It's basically the pen clip. Okay, Twisby is not very friendly, I realize now. Okay, and so that is your fountain pen anatomy. I hope you learned a little bit. Um, the more I handle this kasama, I'm very, very glad to have it in my collection. I am very proud to have a Filipino fountain pen in my collection. Okay, um, so there you have it. I hope you learned a little bit about fountain pens today, and I hope that you find it helpful as you also go through your fountain pen journey. This is Kikai from Kikai Crafts. I hope to share more content that sort of documents what I've been learning so that those of you who are starting with your fountain pen journey kind of learn with me as well. Now, if you have any corrections or if you have any thoughts about what I'm sharing, please go and write it in the comments. I really like to take this journey with other people because I do have many questions myself and I'd like to learn from others. Okay then, uh, I think this is quite a long video already. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you subscribe so that you can get more information like this. Do like this video too if you've learned a thing or two from it and leave your comments. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, have a great day or a restful evening, whichever part of the world you're in or whenever you are watching this. Okay, bye everybody.